Well, thank you very much. I'm no expert. Uh, but you see, the whole concept of conflict is undergoing a fundamental change now. And part of them are a whole lot of issues we did not have earlier. Interconnectivity, um, climate change, asymmetric threat, non-state actors. So this whole lot of thing has got together. And uh, there are, I'm afraid there are no quick fix solutions to this. Uh, we have to look at collaboration, we have to look at inclusive approach, and we have to address these issues in entirety uh, because uh, it's no more problems related to a particular nation or particular region. Uh, they affect all of us all over the globe. And I think the importance of to conflict management has never been that important of a multilateral approach to address these issues. Uh, so that would be, I, I, I don't really, would never think of any quick fix solutions anywhere. Well, let me tell you that uh, I was at a distinct advantage at that time because uh, South Sudan was definitely looking for independence and the United Nations was uh, always looked upon, uh, uh, you know, to deliver and we got all the help and the assistance. So to that extent, I don't like the two comparisons because thereafter everything changed. The UN was seen more of a stick. During our time, UN was a carrot because we had to deliver. They wanted independence, you see. So we were really the UN peacekeepers were the heroes because we were redeploying the northern forces out of Sudan. Uh, having said that, I definitely feel in the initial stages uh, we did uh, manage to address the ethnic uh, issues etc. Uh, in a little more coherent manner. I won't say that later on they are not coherent but the gravity of the problem itself has manifested so much that uh, it's not fair to, for me to compare. I think in, in my case was relatively easier because South, that were aspirations that time. Aspirations and hope of an independent South Sudan which would deliver and the UN was always seen as a facilitator to that. No, no. You see, United Nations is only a facilitator. United Nations is not the panacea. And normally what happens is when the blue flag turns up because of the very massive mandates that we give, which raises the expectation bar itself, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow, part of it is the mandate formulation. We set the bar so high and set the expectation bar to so high that we are not able to deliver on the peace. And that is why this gap comes in. So I don't think UN can come around and establish peace everywhere. It can facilitate an increasingly more of regional and multilateral approach uh, and uh, more collaboration between various stakeholders and uh, the whole sensitivity I, I don't think we should ever forget uh, that when we hear these voices chapter 7 do this do that don't forget you are there in that host to help that host and national ownership national uh, uh, national uh, assistance in building their institutions is most critical. Uh, you see, I feel the role of the military peacekeepers is changing a little. Contrary to a lot of people who would like to see them purely as military people, I feel in the hybrid conflict there is a requirement of military peacekeepers to understand the enormity of the conflict and so that uh, our commanders play a non-military role because today we are they're looking at things purely military and it's not a military issue at all but that can only happen if our commanders are trained on non-military issues and how empowered actually how to collaborate with various people as a tool towards conflict resolution rather than purely trying to resolve issues by themselves.